Hey guys, what is going on? It's me, Box 12 here, and welcome back to another Realm of the Mad God update video. As mentioned earlier in the week, the preparation for Oryx 3 has begun, so we are collecting the three runes that we will use for his eventual arrival. So the current chest events that are going on will house the Helmet rune from the Cultist and Void, and the Sword rune from the Shatters. Interestingly, the Cult and Void precede the Shatters event, barring in mind some overlap, which I found was kind of interesting because typically Shatters is seen as a precursor to the Halls, at least in difficulty. So, that was kind of neat. We also get a nice visual of all of the loot that can drop in each of the chests. After defeating Malice, the Void Entity, and the Forgotten King, there will be an event chest for each, which you should know how it operates by now. More or less, it contains the same items that the boss you just killed also drops. So from Cultist, you can get the Necro set, Void, get the Void set, including Omni, and the Shatters dropping its respective accessories, as well as the usual pet food, loot drop, loot tier, clovers, soulbound potions, dyes, all that stuff. Although no Marble Colossus items, oddly enough. I understand that maybe they didn't want to double dip for people who were going to do a Marble and Void event, but the fact that Marble loot isn't even included in the Void drops is kind of a disappointment. I really like those items, and it would have been nice to have a bonus chance at those as well. They include a reminder that the Keeper is still around and he'll be here until the 6th of May, so it's still actually quite a bit of time to keep on farming him for those event whites. The last thing they mention is a small thing, but an interesting one. They're going back and changing a lot of the feed power on certain items. They give a medium-sized list here of all the items that are going to have a reduction in feed power. My eye was immediately drawn to the Coral Bow. For the longest time, that was one of the best UTs in regards to its feed power, 1200. And while it's always somewhat bittersweet to see a nerf happen, I do totally understand the need for or something like that. I mean, whenever you think about it, Helm of the Juggernaut has 1250 feed power, and Coral has 1200. But just on rarity alone, anyone can tell you, those points are not properly representative. So I imagine they're gonna bring the Coral Bow down to something like 1000, maybe even 800 to match Sea Silk, which I notice is not on the list. A couple of the Manor UTs are, however, which is kind of unfortunate. I always felt like those were a, a nice, easy access for newer players to get some decent feed power items for their new pets. But as of now, they have not revealed the values yet. What I do like is how at the bottom they say that they are going to buff a handful of items as well, including Shatter's UTs, Lod UTs, and many Event Whites, which is very nice to see because you would expect the rarer and better items to contain more feed power. But that does propose the question, why not just raise all of the feed power? Why even bother nerfing some of them? I understand that there's like a business tactic here. You don't want semi-common UTs to rival or even exceed other pet food options, because then that means less of an incentive to buy pet food, aka less revenue for DECA. But for a lot of the rarer UTs, the feed power on those items means almost nothing, because why would you ever want to feed that good of an item that you don't get very often, even if the feed power was really high. I don't think there's a single event white that I'd actually want to feed. Keep in mind, I've also ever only gotten one Ray Katana, and I actually like it, but I think a serious overhaul and buff to most of the UT's feed power in this game is in order. Some necessary nerfs here and there, of course. Balance is a give and take. But generally speaking, most items don't have feed power that properly represents their rarity or their utility. But I'm just thinking out loud here, I won't get ahead of myself. But that's all there is for this update. The event starts tomorrow on April 22nd. So if you can find a guild or a server who's popping keys, dive in and have some fun. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, don't forget to check out the next episode whenever I post it, which will probably be soon. All right. See ya.